Russia's war in Ukraine has generated considerable concern around the world about the prospects of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. Even as ongoing hostilities wreak havoc on international commodity markets, Taiwan's status as a critical node in the global semiconductor supply chain means a Chinese invasion would have unparalleled consequences for the global economy which heavily relies on Taiwanese-made semiconductors to function. So what events have led to Taiwan's dominance in the global semiconductor market? And why is it continued security under threat? What's clear is that tensions between China and Taiwan are at their worst in 40 years. And many are asking, is the war coming? Despite the huge military discrepancy between the two sides, many analysts believe Taiwan's location, inhospitable terrain and US support mean China would find a full-scale invasion extremely hard and possibly too costly to countenance. China could lose the war. A lot of people are going to die. So China could face sanctions, boycotts, tech bans. China has to face the problems of how to deal with destroy Taiwan. But we think that more that Jinping is that he can get Taiwan by force at an acceptable cost. The more tempting that prospect becomes for him. In a March essay for the National Security Focused website war on the rocks, Hunziker and Adam Lee, Simon, Taiwan's former chief of general staff, argued only the government was capable of ensuring a territorial defense program was fully integrated into a holistic, multi-layered, denial-centered defensive scheme. So this really wears down the pilots in Taiwan, their equipment as they are in constant use. China has also been accused of orchestrating disinformation campaigns on social media sites like Facebook. The purpose is all about discredit our own government. They want to create distrust among our society. Second reason is younger adults in Taiwan tend to favor economic relations with the US or relations with the mainland more than their older counterparts and they are more supportive when it comes to closer relations with the US. For example, Roughly 8 in 10 or more of each age group favor closer U.S. Taiwan ties in economic matters. Only about 4 in 10 adults aged 18 to 29 say they would support closer economic ties with mainland China, while 55% of those 50 and older say the same. Among younger people, there's a 50 percentage point difference in support for economic relations with the two countries. A similar pattern exists when it comes to political relations with the US and mainland China. The third sign is growing US support for Taiwan is infuriating China. The survey results also showed high levels of trust in the US coming to Taiwan's aid in the event of hostilities with 54% of respondents saying they thought the US military could effectively protect Taiwan. Separately, 58.8% said it was a possibility that the U.S. would send troops to help Taiwan in the event of war. The U.S. sends billions of dollars in weaponry of a defensive character to Taiwan. Washington officials have also made statements suggesting it was likely to come to Taiwan's aid militarily in case of conflict. For decades, the U.S. has operated a policy of strategic ambiguity, neither confirming nor rejecting commitments to help in order to deter provocative action by both Beijing and TRP. Hong Kiwing Bo, a professor of diplomacy at the National Chengchi University and former KMT deputy director, told The Garden Taiwanese were perhaps not aware of the reality. Due to a lack of specific military knowledge and political messaging that the US would come to Taiwan's aid, I think they have illusion about our capability and the US commitment to help Taiwan, he said. Confidence in US assistance varied according to age. Commonwealth Maxine reported with those under 40 holding a more favorable view of the US. Those older believed China was stronger than US and were thus more concerned about the prospect of war. So finally, the fourth point is that China enjoys the largest coast guard in the world, the largest navy, has the most advanced crews and ballistic missile program in the world. 
It's one of the largest air forces. China carried out a land-based missile interception test that achieved its expected purpose. Its defense ministry announced late on Sunday aimed the ongoing military standoff along the disputed land border with India to the northwest of the country and rising tension with Taiwan of its southeastern coast. So they have the numbers, but also in recent years, their technology has become much more advanced as well. China's land-based conventional missile capabilities have developed significantly over the last several years. In the years since then, China has developed the world's largest and most diverse arsenal of ground-launched ballistic and cruise missiles. A 2020 report by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, China Power, which tracks the country's development said. And for these kind of sophisticated weapons need microchips. You see, Taiwan has something that China doesn't, which is the access to the most advanced semiconductor manufacturing equipment in the world. Taiwan's crown jewel is a company called Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company or TSM for short. Why is the Taiwan Semiconductor so important? It's simple because they make lots of semiconductor about more than 60%, especially on the advanced one such as below 5 nanometer, about 90%. They even make them cheaply, not only on industrial ICs but especially on military one. So guys, this was for today. Give us your thoughts on this in the comment section and if you appreciate our content, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your family and friends. We will meet soon in a new video. Thank you. Jai Hind.